Right now, a 29-year-old man is recovering from gunshot wounds in the hospital this morning as police search for leads in identifying a shooting suspect. And we'll have the latest from Sun Prairie, where two companies are cooperating with investigators looking into what caused a gas explosion that killed a volunteer fire captain. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News 3 This Morning. 6 o'clock right now on this Friday the 13th. Thanks for joining us. We made it to the yeah. end of the week, finally. Exactly. It's Even in this heat. heat. A very <laughs> hot day for Ooh, the yeah. end of the week. I know. Happy Friday the 13th on that one. An alert day for the heat and the humidity that we are expecting out there today. But th get this, there is a chance for some showers and thunderstorms later, a marginal risk for those to be some severe thunderstorms as well. 75 degrees this morning. Dew points are into the upper 60s, so the air will feel heavy as you step outside. Madison, one of the warm spots, so is Boscobel at 76 degrees this morning. A few of us are still right around 68 and 69 degrees, but most of us are in the 70s. Dew points are in the 60s and 70s as well. They're going to be staying that way pretty much all day long, which means that heat index is going to be taking a trip into the upper 90s and low 100s for a lot of folks today, but eventually that cold front later on tonight bringing those chances for showers and thunderstorms. It'll feel a little bit better, though still humid into your Saturday. Traffic is running smoothly. Here's the Beltline at Park Street. No major issues showing up, really no slows or delays even showing up on the map right now in Madison or around Dane County, other than the closures that we've had in Sun Prairie just about uh, for the consistently for the past yeah. couple of days. Still tough to get downtown there. Yes, it, is. it is. All right. Thank All you, Chris. Right. Thanks, Appreciate Chris. it. Anytime. Developing overnight, Fitchburg police are investigating after a man was shot multiple times. It happened just before 10, close to Leopold Elementary School in the Springs Park in the 2500 block of Post Road. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a 29-year-old man with multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital with injuries that are not believed to be life-threatening. A white SUV was seen leaving the area, but there is no other information about that suspect. Ten minutes after that shooting, Fitchburg police responded to the 3300 block of Leopold Way for reports of shots being fired. Police said an apartment building there had been shot multiple times. It was occupied at the time of the gunshots, but no injuries have been reported so far. A man in all black clothing was seen running from the scene, but there is no additional information on that suspect right now. Police do not know if the two incidents are related, but they said they do not believe the acts were random. Be sure to stay with Channel3000.com for updates throughout the day as we learn more. We are continuing to follow the investigation into this week's fatal gas explosion in Sun Prairie, and we're learning more this morning about the company responsible for breaking that gas line in the first place. Verizon Wireless confirmed to News 3 and to investigators it contracted with a company called Bear Communications to improve its fiber network in downtown Sun Prairie. Employees with Bear Construction were working on a fiber project there when they reportedly hit that gas line, caused the explosion that killed volunteer fire captain Corey Barr. There are still questions this morning about whether Bear followed proper procedures before it started digging, pulled the proper permits and the mapping of that area. Both companies say they're going to cooperate with law enforcement in what it's now calling a death investigation. In the meantime, Sun Prairie's mayor says he wants to knock down the buildings that are not structurally sound and rebuild that city's main street. One of the firefighters injured in Tuesday's explosion is back home this morning after spending a few days in the hospital. Yesterday afternoon, the department welcomed firefighter Ryan Welch back with a procession through town. They picked him up at the Cabela's across town and brought him to the station there. One by one, his brothers and sisters gave him a big hug. One of the assistant chiefs told us how helpful it is to have one of their own back after such a difficult week. Being able to have that support come back, trying to help us get over the tough times of the loss of Captain Corey Barr, you know, this is now an uplifting that uh, can kind of keep us in, in check with what really goes on and what's really important in life. Sullivan also wanted to thank the community. He said the support you at home have given has made the job worth doing. Right now, there is a GoFundMe set up for Ryan and his family. You can find a link to that and all the other GoFundMes right now at channel3000.com. So we are just talking about Captain Corey Barr. Flags across Wisconsin are going to be lowered to half staff in his honor today. Governor Walker says his memory, his legacy of selflessness and service will live on through his family and his crew. So far, more than 2,700 people have committed money over the last day or so to help the Barr family. They've raised nearly $150,000 to help his wife and twin three-year-old daughters 
with their expenses on a GoFundMe page you're seeing right there. Over on Channel3000.com, we have a link to this page, Ryan Welch's page. You just heard Josh talking about that. And other GoFundMe sites set up to help Sun Prairie residents who are now dealing with extra costs related to that explosion. There is an opportunity to show your support for Captain Barr and firefighters across Wisconsin in person this weekend. A public memorial in his memory is going to be held tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at Sun Prairie High School. There will be a private visitation for his family and close friends later on tonight. Five minutes past the hour right now. Many people are still trying to figure out how to help the people in Sun Prairie. The Red Cross of Wisconsin wants to share some ideas. Christina Laurie stopped by their shelter at the high school this morning before going downtown to share the nonprofit's advice. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Adam and Josh. Yes, we stopped by that high school on our way to the downtown area and found a family of six still staying there. Immediately following Tuesday's deadly explosion that you can see the explosion site down the block here, uh, more than 100 people who live in the around the downtown area were brought to to the high school for care. Fortunately, most of those people besides that family of six are back in their own homes now, and they've turned their focus to helping the others still hurt by the tragedy. The Red Cross and Salvation Army are raising money for those people. They say while it's often people's first instinct to help by bringing food, that's not the most effective way to help out in times like this. People that come and helped up set, set up the shelters, people that did transportation, bringing cots in and out, mental health professionals, people that have those degrees that can help in, nursing staff, we had nursing staff here for two days as well helping out. So there's people with different, uh, different backgrounds and you know, different interests. The Red Cross of Wisconsin says that handling physical donations of food and water can be logistically challenging. That's why donating your time is so helpful. They also say that unexpected tragedies like Tuesday's explosion can cause them to be short on other resources like blood. They say they've ha already had to cancel several scheduled blood drives across the area after Tuesday's explosion. So if you don't have a lot of time to volunteer, if you can volunteer your blood, that would also be very helpful. I put a link to the different ways that you can help volunteer on our website, channel3000.com. It's been amazing to see the public come forward already, and you know it's only going to continue. This is Laura reporting live in Sun Prairie. This is thank you. And as always, stick with News 3 as we learn more about the investigation, the community response, the firefighter just released from the hospital, and of course, remembering Captain Corey Barr. We'll have the latest on News 3 this morning and as well as the Channel 3000 mobile app. Seven minutes after six on this Friday morning. If you're driving on Madison's east side, we have a first floor traffic note for you at nine o'clock this morning. South Brearley near East Main and East Wilson are going to be closed down for the FET to Marquette. South Ingersoll has been closed in that area since Wednesday because the Wilmar Neighborhood Center was setting up the festival. Those streets are set to reopen early Monday morning. Now, speaking of the Fete de Marquette, the French theme festival is put on by the Neighborhood Center and the Willie Street Co-op. There's a ton of live music and food. It's free to hear the bands, but the money from the food sales does help provide free community meals in the future that's passed out, given out by the Neighborhood Center. Fete de Marquette starts this afternoon at 4 o'clock. And also happening this weekend, Art Fair on the Square. They'll be celebrating 60 years in Madison. The festival features everything from paintings to photographs to handmade clothing and jewelry from more than 500 artists. It runs Saturday from 9 to 6 and Sunday from 10 to 5. The fair draws nearly 200,000 visitors to the Capitol Square each year, so plan to have a little bit more time to find that parking spot. And since the art fair is taking over Capitol Square, the Dane County Farmer's Market has a different location and hours tomorrow. You can stop by Breeze Stevens Field on East Washington Avenue and Mifflin Street from 7 until 1. Some different hours there as well. There's a perk to change that or that location change to the Breeze Stevens concession stand will be open. So you can grab a beer or maybe just a coffee while you shop. The market will be back on the Capitol Square at the normal time next Saturday. So after you do all that shopping, maybe you want to go to the movies this weekend. Dracula, the Mummy, and Frankenstein Monster are back, but this time going on a cruise. Sounds good to me. Our, Our film critic Will Loper is in next with a preview of Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. And it might just be the perfect weekend to go to a movie because Chris is calling in an alert day today. Just ahead, he's going to let us know if the extreme heat and humidity is going to be sticking around. Chance for some rain as well. Thanks for watching News 3 this morning.
Good Friday morning to you. Welcome to the last day of the work week headed into the weekend. It is a beautiful morning. It is humid as you step outdoors, though it's still beautiful. It's clear skies right now. Here's a live look at the Capitol Square showing you all of the sunshine that we do have out there. Temperatures are at 75 degrees with dew points into the upper 60s. It's the reason it's humid and that's a sign of what's to come as we go through the rest of the day, keeping those dew points in the upper 60s and 70s pretty much all day long at as they are now, especially with winds out of the south. And as we go into the afternoon, they're going to begin to turn out of the south and southwest. And that's just going to continue to add to that heat and the humidity that we're going to feel later on this afternoon and evening. However, that northwesterly wind already starting to take shape even as far south as the north woods of Wisconsin. That's where our cold front is located, seeing showers and thunderstorms in those regions right now. We don't have them here in Madison, but they're going to be pushing their way in as we go throughout the day after seeing a high right around 86 degrees. Pay attention to the showers and thunderstorms across the north and west. Those will push southward into the overnight hours and through tomorrow. We're going to keep those rain chances around pretty much through Saturday morning as well. And those rain chances even still will come back again as we get to the day on Sunday. Now before that rain comes in today, it will be very warm and very humid. We'll see those heat indices making it into the upper 90. Some places feeling like upwards of 100 degrees or so. So you'll want to make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Then eventually that rain chance gets in here and it'll start to feel a little bit better. I will say this, the forecast models indicating a nice potential for some heavy rain with some of these showers and thunderstorms when it's this hot and this humid for so long and we haven't had many much in the way of any showers or thunderstorms over the past couple of days. You kind of get what's known as a loaded barrel. The atmosphere is just juiced up and essentially ready to go. That cold front coming in today acts as a zipper to essentially unleash that bag of heat and humidity. So we do have a slight chance of some showers and thunderstorms later on, but don't be surprised if some of these put down some pretty heavy water overnight and into Saturday. And then, of course, that's not the only rain chance we have. We have additional rain chances into next week. And not everyone will get in on this much rain, but depending on where you're located, if you get underneath just one thunderstorm that sits over an area for quite a while, it can put down quite a bit of water. This morning temperatures rising from 74 to 81 degrees will be mostly cloudy and humid some before that sun really begins to take over for all of us. 86 this afternoon and of course that chance for those showers and thunderstorms that's going to be increasing as we go into the overnight hours by your Saturday temperatures topping out right around 84 degrees rain chances through Monday before Tuesday and Wednesday next week look pretty fantastic really other than that minor chance of rain on Thursday all of next week looks great. Great. Now let's go to Jason Ryan with your first alert traffic. Jason. Good morning. No problems at the moment on the Beltline for the morning commute. Traffic is steady with no delays anywhere on the road. Looking around Dane County, nothing slowing you down on the interstate and the highways, but as always, watch out in construction zones. Downtown, there are small areas of backups happening. West Washington Region to Region and Park, South Webster from King to East Main. Seeing delays. Your drive times around Madison should be normal for this time of day. With no issues around town, it'll be a nice commute. With First Alert Traffic, I'm Jason Ryan. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you, Chris. So we have seen Dracula, The Mummy, and Frankenstein. Monster run a hotel now for two movies, but this weekend... This weekend, the monsters are going on a cruise. It's pretty cool. The movie is Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation. We've got Will Loper, our film critic here. Good morning. Good yes. morning. So the Adam Sandler animated franchise, that's hopefully not as immortal as Dracula himself. is indeed back, <laughs> although Adam's kids would disagree. They love it. They love it. Uh, but thankfully, hey, the reviews are mostly positive for this film, but uh, take a look for yourself and see. Check it out, Jack. There's so much to do. Olympic size swimming pool. I got this. Oh, you can eat for me. Full service spa. Yeah, so impressive. It's like a hotel on the water. While on vacation, Dracula begins to fall for the captain of a ship who may or may not secretly be a vampire hunter. You were right, great-grandfather Van Helsing. Monsters are disgusting. They have no idea what's about to happen to them. <laughs> hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation is rated PG. <laughs> There's something about an accent that makes a man sound so intelligent. 
<laughs> Come on, that's why the kids love it. Oh, it's funny. Well. Yes, okay. The trailer, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was giggling a little bit. Did you yes. like the first two? I liked the first one. The second one didn't quite do it for me, but uh, yeah. I don't. Is the second one where they're raising the kid? Uh, the second one where he up. meets his dad. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very Sorry. old yeah. Dracula. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, for kids, it's perfect. And, you know, it's just nonstop action and three musical numbers. And yeah. uh, kids will love it. So you're going to have to get to this one later because <laughs> no reviews on Monday because you're doing the Madison 48-hour film fest. Yep, yep, I'll be making a movie this weekend. I don't just talk the talk. I walk the walk, too. So, <laughs> But I'll be back next week defending with more movie Defending champ. Yes, uh, that's you're right. Defending yes, uh, Say a what lot it of is. pressure. Oh, I'm nervous. Defending champ. Good All luck. right, Will. Thank you. Yep, thanks, guys. A Madison woman is waking up this morning with a fresh coat of paint on her home. Why dozens of Navy members came to town to help this 92-year-old out. It's a do-something-good story you won't want to miss. Let's take a live look outside. It's been in the mid-70s already this morning, and it's only going to get warmer. Chris has talked about the alert day today and looking ahead to the weekend when News 3 This Morning continues. Good morning. We're waking up to a mix of sun and clouds, but it's going to be another warm and humid day out there. This morning, temperatures rising from the 70s and into the low 80s by about lunchtime. And of course, it's going to be mild and humid during that time frame. By the time we get you into this afternoon, we're going to see those temperatures right around 86 degrees. For those highs, make sure you are drinking plenty of water. In fact, heat indices likely between 95 and 100 today. Adam. Thank you very much, Chris. It's at 622 right now. A memorial service is planned this weekend for the winningest coach in Wisconsin swimming and diving team history. 
Talk about Jack Pettinger. He led the men's team from 1969 to 1993 and coached 36 All-American swimmers and divers in those 24 seasons. His life will be celebrated tomorrow at the Crest Funeral Home on Madison's near west side on Speedway. Jack Pettinger was 79 years old. For 30 years, Habitat for Humanity has been building homes, community, and hope. And because of them, one Madison woman not only has a fresh coat of paint on her home, the nonprofit also allowed her the opportunity to talk about her late husband. 92-year-old Margaret Buchanan, uh, or Margaret Buchanan asked Habitat to repaint her house after her husband died. He was a Navy veteran. Thursday, more than a dozen current members of the Navy came up from the Chicago area to help her out. To be able to give back uh, to someone that's served in the past, uh, you can't really describe how it makes you feel. Mrs. Buchanan told the painter she was very happy with the work they did and the respect they paid to her late husband. Very cool story. 623 right now. People continue to show their support for those impacted in this week's fatal explosion in Sun Prairie. We are going to be live from the scene here in a couple of minutes with some details on how you can help. And Democratic candidates vying for two separate campaigns will be feeling the burn this weekend where former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders is set to visit and who he's supporting. That's just ahead right here on News 3 this morning. Flags will fly at half-staff across Wisconsin today in honor of the firefighter who gave his life helping others in the Sun Prairie explosion. We'll share the details of a public memorial set for tomorrow. And we'll have a live report from that city where the Red Cross says they have enough donations of food, water, and emergency supplies, but there's a different way you can help right now. This is News 3 This Morning.
And a very good morning to you and welcome back to News 3 this morning. We are just before 630 right now on this Friday, July 13th. Made it to the end of the week. We did. It's still 75 degrees. <laughs> it's been 75 degrees since Oof. like 430 this morning. You it know is, it's going to be hot then, right? It's hot. It's humid. There's a chance for some storms. Let's go outside to Chris Reese, who's out on the weather patio this morning with the latest. Good morning. Good morning. Lots of sunshine out there, but yes, it is hot and it is humid today. An alert day for that heat and humidity that we'll feel, especially as we get you into the afternoon. It's going to be one of those brutal days for the heat and the humidity, but eventually we will cool things off. We're just waiting on a cold front to come in later on. Temperatures still in the mid 70s right now with those dew points well into the 60s, which is a large reason for why it does feel so humid. We're going to keep those dew points in the upper 60s to around 70 later on into the afternoon before we cool things off just a little bit. But this morning temperatures rising from 74 to 81 degrees by lunchtime this afternoon. We're going to see those highs right around 86 with the chance of some showers and thunderstorms. You factor in the fact that dew points are going to be high. Those heat indices are going to go well into the 90s today. Some heat indices into the low 100s before that cold front begins to come in and cool things off later on with those rain chances into the overnight hours. Traffic continuing to run smoothly on uh, the Beltline. No major issues or delays showing up. You've got a few back uh, or slowdowns um, on Stoughton Road and on 151 headed towards downtown, but those are the only backups we are seeing right now. So far, main, ro main routes are cruising along at their normal speeds with no crashes or delays. Guys. Thank you very much, Chris. We are continuing to follow the investigation into this week's fatal gas explosion in the city of Sun Prairie. Now we're learning more about the company responsible for breaking the gas line in the first place. Verizon Wireless confirmed to News 3 and investigators it had contracted with a company called Bear Communications to improve its network. Employees with Bear Communications were working on a fiber project in downtown Sun Prairie when they reportedly hit that gas line, caused the explosion that killed volunteer fire captain Corey Barr. There are still questions this morning about whether Bear Communications followed proper procedures, pulled permits, did some surveying, some mapping before it started digging. Both companies say they will cooperate with law enforcement in this investigation. In the meantime, you see some of the buildings there. Sun Prairie's mayor says he wants to knock those down that are not structurally re uh, secure right now and then go about rebuilding that city's main street. This morning, one of the firefighters injured in Tuesday's explosion is waking up at home after spending a few days in the hospital. Yesterday afternoon, the department welcomed firefighter Ryan Welch back with a procession through town. At the fire station, one of uh, one on one, his brothers and sisters gave him a big hug. One of the assistant chiefs told us how helpful it is to have one of their own back after such a difficult week. He also thanked the community, saying the support they've given has made the job worthwhile. Right now, there is a GoFundMe set up for Ryan and his family. We have a link to that on our website right now, channel3000.com. As we mentioned a couple of minutes ago, flags across the state are going to be lowered to half staff. To honor Captain Barr today, Governor Walker says his memory, his legacy of selflessness and service will live on through his family and his crew. More than 2,700 people have so far committed money over the last couple of days to help the Barr family. They've raised over $148,000 right now. 2,712 people have donated to help Corey Barr's wife and twin three-year-old daughters with their expenses. That's a GoFundMe page you're seeing right there. Over on channel3000.com, we have a link to this website, to this GoFundMe page, as well as the one for Ryan Welch and all of the others that have been set up to help Sun Prairie residents who are now dealing with extra costs related to that explosion. There is an opportunity to show your support for Captain Barr later today or tomorrow in Wisconsin. Public Memorial is going to be held Saturday morning at 11 o'clock at Sun Prairie High School. There is a private visitation set up for his family and close friends later tonight. 631 right now, the Sun Prairie community and really the greater Madison community has been donating money and time to help those people who were forced out of their homes and their businesses because of this explosion. Now, most of the people who live in that area are back in their homes this morning, but there are still ways that you can help. Our Christina Laurie is live in Sun Prairie this morning with some ideas on how you can get involved. Christina, good morning to you. Good morning, Josh and Adam. After tragedies like Tuesday's deadly explosion here in downtown Sun Prairie, it's oftentimes people's first instinct to donate things like food. 
and water to help those people in need. But officials with both the Red Cross and the Salvation Army say that is not the most effective way you can get involved. Instead, they're asking people to volunteer their time to organizations like the Red Cross or Salvation Army, as well as considering donating money to them. The Red Cross says they're best equipped to handle basic needs, like giving people who are displaced food, water, and a place to stay. They also provide mental health services for free to anyone impacted by tragedy. These are all volunteers, if you can believe it. Uh, you know, we're a volunteer-driven organization. You know, 95% of our workforce is volunteers, so we can't be more proud of them. It's something like this is just a tragedy, uh, and but it really brings the community together. It certainly raises awareness for what our agency does, other agencies do, what 211 does. Certainly, the Salvation Army does great work. You know, they come together because not one agency can do it all. You really need the power of the community to help out. Immediately following the explosion, Sun Prairie High School served as a reception center and shelter for more than 100 displaced residents, many from area nursing homes. As of this morning, a family of six was still staying there. But later this afternoon, that high school will transform into a resource center where anyone who still needs help from the community can go from 2 until 8 today to learn about all of the services provided to them for free. If anyone else in the community would also like to step in and volunteer, you can head to our website, channel3000.com. I put links to the various different ways you can help out. All right, Christina Laurie, continuing our live coverage this morning. Christina, thank you. Be sure to stay with News 3 as we learn more about this investigation, the community response, the firefighter just released from the hospital, and of course, Captain Corey Barr, who we're remembering this morning. We'll have the latest on News 3 and we'll always on at channel3000.com. 6.33 right now in other news this morning. Dane County officials are looking for an inmate who is missing. 35-year-old Tasha Olson was in the Dane County Jail serving a sentence for cocaine possession. She'd been in the jail diversion program. She's five feet, four inches tall, weighs 140 pounds with black hair, brown eyes. Anybody who knows where she might be is being asked to call 911. 634 right now on this Friday morning, former Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders is set to be in Wisconsin this weekend for two separate campaign rallies. On Saturday, he'll be attending an event supporting Senator Tammy Baldwin in Eau Claire. There's also one plan for congressional candidate Randy Bryce in Janesville. Bryce is in a Democratic primary campaign with Kathy Myers to replace House Speaker Paul Ryan in Congress. Sanders easily won Wisconsin's 2016 primary over the party's eventual presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton. So ahead of those events, the Republican Party of Wisconsin's hosting a rally today in Eau Claire for U.S. Senate candidate Leah Vukmir. Vukmir is running against Kevin Nicholson in the August primary for the right to challenge Senator Baldwin in November. Nicholson was ahead in the latest Marquette Law School poll, but many of Wisconsin's elected Republican officials are supporting Vukmir. Mayor. Meanwhile, Senator Baldwin's warning Wisconsin she could lose this fall. Political reports Baldwin's telling her supporters and donors she fears a repeat of 2016 when Republican Senator Ron Johnson came from behind to win his reelection campaign against Democrat Russ Feingold. Vukmir's rally we were talking about at the Republican Party office in Eau Claire this afternoon. You're going to see a lot of political rallies in western Wisconsin this summer and fall because historically it has been the deciding region in many statewide political races. And 6.35 right now, there have been two overnight shootings in Fitchburg while the latest in the morning sprint. First, though, we'll tell you why a prominent Madison Alder is now running for mayor. The news back in the morning on News 3 this morning.
Welcome back. It's almost 639 right now on this Friday morning, the time of the morning we always ask you to share a little bit of what's going on in your world with us. And Paris posted this picture on Facebook from a trip to Lake Delton, I'm assuming this summer. Uh, it's beautiful out there. It'd be a nice weekend to get out on the water. Perfect if, time down to get yeah, on the I mean, water. Yeah, I mean, the temperatures are such that you kind of want to be outside, if possible, on water. All right, thank you so much for sharing, Paris. We appreciate it. So what does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page, or you can find us on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We'll share our favorites right here on News 3 this morning. We're sharing some information about a developing story right now. The Janesville Police Department has asked us to report on a hit and run accident that has sent one person to the hospital. She is there after that crash happened just after two o'clock this morning. Janesville police say her injuries are consistent with being struck by a car. This happened not too far from the Janesville Country Club. Witnesses reported seeing two people fighting and then a truck took off and hit this woman. She was outside of her car. Police officers are asking their uh, people right now to look out for a black or darker colored Chevy truck with a lift kit and what would now have a broken tail light. Anybody with information should call Janesville Crime Stoppers. 640 right now, a prominent Madison Elder is joining the race for mayor. Maurice Cheeks announced his candidacy yesterday. He served three terms on the Madison Common Council representing Madison's diverse 10th district. Cheeks's per platform is built on tackling crime, housing affordability, and education to grow the middle class. He also says he wants to create opportunities for Madison's working class. Cheeks joins Satya Rhodes Conway. They're the only two candidates who have officially announced their campaigns. Mayor Paul Soglin, who is currently focused on his run for governor, has yet to state if he will run for re-election. Madison's mayoral election will take place in April 2nd of 2019. Staying with politics now, half of the eight Democratic candidates for governor are going to be in Madison for a forum on Sunday. That forum is called the Final Four Candidate Forum, features the top four candidates based on two online votes. Thousands of Wisconsin Democrats participated in those surveys to make the forum easier for voters to make a decision on August 14th when the Democratic primary is held. The top four, according to the surveys, where Mike McCabe, Malin Mitchell, Kelda Roy's, and Kathleen Vine out. They're going to answer moderator and town hall style questions from the audience. That event is going to be at the Goodman Community Center Sunday night, 6 o'clock. 641 is your time right now. If you've stepped outside this morning, you felt it. The heat and humidity are still here as we wake up, and Chris is calling it another alert day today because of it. Next on News 3 this morning, he'll let us know just how hot it will feel today and if we can expect any relief this weekend. It is July 13th. We want to know if you have a little kid turning three soon. Please let us know so we can put their picture on TV, help celebrate their birthday here on News 3 this morning.
taking a live look outside right now on the west side of Madison, courtesy of the WISC TV Sky Cam. So you can't see heat through the camera, <laughs> but you'll feel it the second you go outside. It's an alert day. Chris is going to share the chance of some rain here in a minute as well. Now, as he monitors the radar and the chance for storms today and tomorrow, there are still a number of counties cleaning up after heavy rain earlier this summer. Governor Walker now is asking FEMA officials to personally conduct a damage assessment inside seven northwest Wisconsin counties. It's estimated that cleaning up those seven counties will cost more than $11 million. Originally, federal officials said private homeowners in that area did not qualify for government help, but the counties are now asking for support rebuilding roads and Chris is going to join us now. We didn't cool off at all or much at all last night, Chris. It's going to be hot out there. It is going to be hot out there and back on the rain topic. Of course, we haven't seen any rain down here in southern Wisconsin over the past eight days or so. It's been even longer in terms of substantial rain at least the past 12 days, but we are looking at some rainfall across the north woods right now and back through southwestern Minnesota. Let's go ahead and show you this. This has been essentially tracking over the same areas all morning long. It's not all that intense. It's actually beginning to lose a little bit of its oomph before picking that back up into the afternoon and evening. That's a cold front gradually working its way to the south, so we don't have these showers here in southern Wisconsin yet, but we will later on today. I'll touch on that and show you guys the timing on when we expect those showers of thunderstorms. 75 degrees, the temperature right now. Dew points are into the 60s, the upper 60s at that, which is why it's going to feel so warm and humid going throughout the day. We've all made it into the 70s at this point we're going to see our temperatures rising even more later on into the afternoon. Dew points are going to stay pretty much where they're at, if not coming up just a little bit into the 70s, which is why we are going to see so much heat and humidity today. We can thank our friend the south and southwest wind for that, funneling in a lot of that moisture from the Midwest. Now, we'll see our temperatures top out around 86 degrees this afternoon. We're going to touch on these showers and thunderstorms that you're seeing just in a second, but I want to show you guys all of the moisture being pumped in from the Midwest. It is these heavy dew points that will be increasing what it's going to feel like, which is why today is an alert day. We could see those heat indices between the 90s and 100 degrees or better into this afternoon. So if you were going to be out, drink plenty of water, and then eventually towards the afternoon, you're going to see quite a temperature spread in the heat index between the 90s and the 70s. This is that chance for rain coming on down south. Overnight, we'll see several rounds of showers and thunderstorms, lots of lightning and thunder likely with that, and those showers and thunderstorms will linger into your Saturday morning as well. They do have the potential to be severe, but that's a marginal risk for some severe weather. So we're not expecting a widespread outbreak by any means. And then, of course, uh, we do have the chance for some pretty heavy rain coming down with that as well. We'll have to keep a close potential on just how much rain we will see. Any one of these showers and thunderstorms could put down a lot of water in a short amount of time. So the alert day today for the heat, but also just that potential for some strong thunderstorms, 84 degrees for your Saturday. By Sunday, we do heat right back up to 87, but that's just a minor little warm up ahead of the major cold front that'll come in, bringing in a nice air mass for the start of next week. We're going to keep most days struggling to get out of the 70s, but at best, we'll see those temperatures top out right around 80 degrees with low humidity and sunshine for Tuesday and Wednesday, staying cool through next week. Here's Jack in Westport <laughs> for your pet walk. He is going to do exactly what I'm excited to do when I get off work today. <laughs> that is sleep. And it will be a, it'll, it'll be the best sleep ever. I promise. At three o'clock, you're going to be napping too. I just might be. You know, <laughs> a lot of people don't know that after work, I've also been helping with the kids' camp, so I've yeah. got about three hours of sleep each night. So I'm ready for poor, a day off. Poor guys drinking coffee now. <laughs> Never one of you did. I think you did that. Think you did that, that. To happen. <laughs> we apologize. It, it was just good coffee. All right. All right. Thank Stay you, with Chris. us. The morning sprint is up next right here on News Three this morning.
652 right now and it's time for the morning sprint. Chris says today is another alert day for heat and humidity and he's keeping an eye on possible storms tonight. And Christina Laurie is reporting from Sun Prairie on how you can help the people impacted by this week's fatal explosion. That is where we start with the latest on the investigation into what happened. Verizon Wireless and a company it contracted with to improve its network, Tell News 3, they are cooperating with Sun Prairie Police as that agency looks into the explosion that killed Sun Prairie Fire Captain Corey Barr. Employees with a company called Bear Communications were working in the area when they reportedly hit that gas line, caused the explosion. There are still questions this morning about whether Bear Communications followed proper procedures, pulled maps, pulled permits before they started digging. Flags across Wisconsin will be lowered to half staff to honor Captain Barr's memory. Governor Walker says his memory and legacy of selflessness and service will live on through his family and his crew. More than 2,700 people have raised nearly $150,000 so far in the last day to help his wife and twin three-year-old daughters with their expenses on a GoFundMe page. We have a link to that page right now at channel3000.com. There's an opportunity to show your support for Captain Barr's family this weekend in person. A public memorial will be held tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at the Sun Prairie High School. There will be a private visitation for his family and friends later tonight. The Sun Prairie community, although physically torn apart by tragedy, is coming together to volunteer their time, money, and resources to help the victims of Tuesday's deadly explosion here in downtown. Immediately following that explosion, more than 100 people living around this area were displaced from their homes and were shuttled over to Sun Prairie High School. Six, a family of six remains there this morning. They're, the Red Cross of Wisconsin provided them with food, water, and a place to stay all for free. Uh, Sun Prairie High School will also serve as a resource center from 2 to 8 o'clock today. The Red Cross Salvation Army in Wisconsin 211 will all be there to talk about the free services they provide to people impacted by the explosion. Many nearby business owners are now getting a first look at the damage done to their property. However, some still don't know when they will be let back in. Thursday, crews set up a fence inside of that boundary. People aren't able to enter or exit right now. We're told it could take weeks to get inside those businesses. At Salvador's, their windows are still broken and food and customers' phones are still on the table. And it's going to be another hot and humid day, an alert day out there. We're keeping some sun and clouds around early with the chance of some showers and thunderstorms as we get you into the afternoon and evening. Heat indices will make it all the way into the upper 90s to near 100 before beginning to cool down into the afternoon. That is showers and thunderstorms working their way south, bringing rain overnight. Thank you, Chris. Fitchburg police are trying to find the person who shot a man multiple times last night near Leopold Elementary School. It's happened just before 10 o'clock. 29-year-old victim has numerous injuries and is at UW Health this morning. He is expected to survive. A white SUV was seen leaving the area. There is no sub suspect description right now to pass along. 10 minutes after that shooting just around the corner, Fitchburg police responded to the 3300 block of Leopold Way for reports of shots being fired. Police said an occupied apartment building there had been shot multiple times, but no one was injured. A man in a black clothing was seen running from that scene, but there's no additional information on that suspect right now. In business news this morning, Johnson & Johnson's being ordered to pay $4.7 billion to the families of 22 women who claim that company's baby powder caused them to develop ovarian cancer. The women convinced a St. Louis jury that the talc-based product contained asbestos that caused the cancer. Johnson & Johnson right now is battling 9,000 talc-related cases as decades of research shows the mineral is safe. The company called the trial, quote, fundamentally unfair, plans to appeal. CBS This Morning is going to share more reaction to the verdict just after 7 o'clock. Dane County voters will get a chance to express their thoughts on legalizing recreational marijuana in November. The county board approved an advisory referendum for the fall ballot on a voice vote last night. It won't hold any legal authority as state lawmakers set criminal policy in Wisconsin, but it will gauge public opinion on the issue. In 2014, 65% of Dane County voters supported a similar referendum. Madison Alder Maurice Cheeks is preparing to run for mayor next spring. He served three terms on the Madison Common Council, representing a district on the city's south and near west sides. He's going to talk about preventing crime, making housing more affordable, as ways to build the city's middle class. Cheeks and Satya Rose Conway are the only two candidates who have officially announced their campaigns. Madison's mayoral election will take place April of 2019. Mayor Paul Soglin is running for governor, hasn't indicated whether he'll rerun 
for election in Madison if he doesn't get the gubernatorial nomination. 656 right now, we've just learned about an accident on the interstate south of Madison. Let's get the latest from Jason Ryan. Good morning, Jason. Uh, good morning. There is a disabled semi that shut down a lane on westbound I-90 north on I-39 near County Road B and and delays are building quickly. Looking into town, no issues on the Beltline in either direction this morning. Your drive from end to end should be a smooth one. Downtown, West Wash starting to back up at Regent. West Dayton from Wisconsin Avenue to State Street. East Odie to South Webster backed up with King Street seeing delays as well. Your drive time still around normal for this time of day. No delays really to slow you down on the Friday commute. With First Alert Traffic, I'm Jason Ryan. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Temperatures right now are in the mid and upper 70, 76 degrees the temperature right now. We're going to keep those dew points coming up into the low 70s, which means it's going to feel very humid later on, topping out around 86 this afternoon, a chance of showers and thunderstorms later tonight. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.